is always important and even more so today in this game. You know, sometimes there are lots of chances in these games, other times there may be only one or two. And with a player like Henrik Larsson, when they do come along, he can finish them. And what's your gut feeling for today? Very much like Graham, that Celtic start the favourites, no question. I think they should go out and win the confidence that they've got, the team they can pick. But I've never seen two, two Rangers or Celtic Rangers games the same yet. And I would err on the side of caution that they don't go chasing the game too quickly and they get caught on the break. OK, there'll be more from Graham and Mick at half-time. It's time now, though, for the whole match live. The live the whole nation has been waiting to see up in the commentary gantry, Willie Miller and Rob McLean. Thanks, Richard. Will this be the day that Rangers' title challenge is effectively ended by their oldest rivals? Celtic go into this famous fixture nine points ahead. And when you think that nine points is all they've spilled in the Scottish Premier League season so far, stretching back 25 games. The facts and the figures tend to be on Celtic's side as well. More than eight hours, Celtic, without conceding a goal. The last time they conceded an SPL goal was an own goal by Tom Boyd. That was two months ago. And these Rangers supporters will be mulling over in their heads to the thoughts that Celtic 11 months unbeaten at home in domestic football. Three changes in the Celtic side from the team which beat Rangers on Wednesday. First choice goalkeeper Rob Douglas is back and the white men return as well. Didier Agat and Bobby Petta out. Jonathan Gould injured Jackie McNamara and suspended Stylian Pentrov. And despite the fact there was an appearance from Belgian defender Jos Valharan in training yesterday, there was never any prospect that Valharan would feature in this match. Lennon and Lambert, key players in the engine room of midfield, ball winners and ball keepers, and Larson and Sutton with 51 goals between them this season. We'll have a look at the Rangers side shortly as the teams line up in the tunnel. And uh, Hugh Dallas, I think he will return for the match, but he's disappeared for the moment. Hugh Dallas will take charge of his 10th Old Firm fixture. So if you're looking for a strong referee and an experienced referee, then he is the man. And despite stories to the contrary, he has refereed an Old Firm match at Celtic Park since that infamous day two seasons ago when he was struck on the head by a coin. Those ugly scenes live long in the memory, but Hugh Dallas did referee a match between these two here on Boxing Day in 99 as well. So he has been back since that day. Outside the Rangers, supporters full of anticipation and full of hope that their side can rise to what this afternoon is the ultimate challenge for them. Barry Ferguson and Tom Boyd leading the sides out. Barry Ferguson with mixed memories of the old firm match this season. He scored, of course, in the 5-1 match at Ibrox back in November. But he was sent off when these sides met and Celtic won 6-2 back in August. A superb atmosphere inside Celtic Park for a match which always matters so much. We've seen the Celtic side, let's have a look at the Rangers team. Two changes from the CIS side that started in midweek, Claudio Reyna suspended, two guy is on the bench, in come Fernando Rickson and Kenny Miller, and there's a show of confidence from Dick Advocat in 20-year-old Robert Malcolm. He will feature again, the 20-year-old at the back, alongside Scott Wilson with Bert Conteman, very much the key figure in that back three. Dick Advocat, unpredictable, this is our shot at how Rangers are going to line up, but uh, Dick Advocat has certainly surprised us before, and it would be no great shock if he did so again. It's a huge afternoon for the Rangers manager, and his hands have been tied to a huge extent, of course, with only 13 senior players fit. Hugh Dallas prepares to get the action underway. And when you look through the players, Rangers don't have available to them, like Amoruso and Moore and Vidmar and Bronckhorst, De Boer and Knowles. 
And they're facing up, of course, to Henrik Larsson. Five goals already against Rangers this season. 14 in Celtic's last seven games. 37 for the season. And 106 in 141 Celtic appearances. Fernando Rickson was taken off after only 23 minutes of the 6-2 defeat earlier in the season. He has something to prove. Barry Ferguson spoke of already leading the Rangers side into this match of huge significance. Title winners for the last two seasons. Can they claw their way back into this championship race? Celtic get the match started. The final Old Firm meeting before the SPL split. And Willie Miller alongside me already drinking in the atmosphere. Yeah, it is quite a superb atmosphere out here. Fans are really looking forward to this one. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a cracker. Neil Lennon on the ball early on. Key man for Celtic. And since signing from Leicester, he's slotted into the Celtic side as if he's been there for years. Early jostling between Lambert and Albert's Rangers free kick and taken quickly up to Miller. Tori Andre Flo shot down quickly by Boyd. Ericsson. George Alberts lining up the drive and sliced well wide of target. He scored seven old firm goals in his time but he didn't look likely there to add to the tally. No, but I think it's always worth uh, testing the goalkeeper this early in the game. Robert Douglas just back, of course, and uh, Albert with that uh, phenomenal left foot of his. It didn't quite happen for him on that occasion, but uh, I think it's well worth the effort. Short of match practice was Albert when he's come back into the Rangers' side in midweek. Rangers will hope to get a little bit more out of him, although he did score the penalty, Rangers' only goal in that game. Johan Melby launched upfield towards towards a Swedish international colleague in Larsson. That's Contemans header. McCann's challenge on Lennon. And Neil McCann involved again. Robert Malcolm. Faulted, of course, for Henrik Larsson's opening goal in the midweek match. £6 million pounds worth of Neil Lennon. And the Celtic supporters reckon he's been worth every penny. Huge responsibility on the shoulders of Bert Contemann this afternoon in the absence of the likes of Moore and Amaruso, very much a senior partner at the back. And he has to take charge. Yeah, I think it is a key role for Contemann, there's no doubt about that. Uh, young players round about him, he's playing right in the heart of that... Uh, back three and he's got to take the responsibility he's got to talk and organise and calm the, the youngsters uh, down round about when they have to be calmed down and lift them when they needed, uh, when they need lifted as well so you know a huge role there for Conterman The long ball there too long for Torrey Andre Flo and safely in the hands of Robert Douglas and Mark McNeil's eyes clearly the undisputed number one for Celtic Jonathan go back and goal in midweek but he was ineligible, of course, Robert Douglas, and immediately restored to the goalkeeper's jersey here. Malcolm for Flo, and runs through for Kenny Miller. So far, pretty typical of a, a game that's so important uh, for both teams. Hasn't really settled down, you know, players not taking any chances, just keeping it nice and simple, making sure but there's no errors made early in the game, just testing each other out. We've still got to see a pattern to this game. Roman Vega's free kick. Well judged by Wilson, but didn't get much of a clearance. And now Didier Agat, first threat from him. In behind Wilson. Agat's cutback takes a deflection on its way through. And hammered away by Rickson. On the end of it, Neil McCann. Flo loses out to Vega. Barney Ferguson's pass intended for Fernando Rickson, but doing good work down the left-hand side for Celtic, Bobby Petter. That's a mistake by Boyd. And 
and Robert Douglas gets there before Kenny Miller. The first opportunity I felt going to Celtic there with a gap getting to the byline, showing great pace to, to hit the byline. Good cross into the box. He'd be disappointed that uh, there wasn't a Celtic player making a run towards the near post. Cross, I thought, made a bit of a meal of that. Uh, a little nervous start for him. Contamon from Miller. Tom Boyd's header. Barry Ferguson stretching out. Thompson. Ferguson just getting himself back to his feet, which they've taken a, a knock in the face. Henrik Larson. Played first time by Petta too quickly. And the free kick is given to the challenge of Pontiman on Sutton. Set piece opportunity for Celtic. Lennon and Thompson there. Vega making his presence felt in the box. Pressing Contamon. It's Sutton. Can't get the ball down for a shot at goal. Optimistic noises from uh, the home supporters. Never a chance of a penalty being given there. Kenny Miller has overrun it. Again, just going back to the free kick taken into the box here. Contamon v Vega. I thought Contamon, you know, just held out of that one too much, didn't think that was a penalty first of all, I don't think uh, in, in this sort of a occasion that you can expect a decision to be given for that one, but that all came from I thought about a weak challenge from Pontiman and Vega, he's got to be much strong, stronger in the box Roman Vega of course who arrived with a bang at Celtic, two goals in his debut much maligned by the Tottenham fans, they were happy to see the back of him, but he hasn't put much of a foot wrong for Celtic so far. Lennon's touch for Thompson. Away from Malcolm, stopped by Contiman, that's a well-timed challenge. Lennon's pass to Mialbi. Mialbi couldn't get into Martin O'Neill's side initially, and now he's a first pick. Chris Sutton scored twice in his first taste of the Old Farm fixture. His header. Larson after it, Contraman's clearance. McCann with Mialbi right at his back. Long angled ball from Contraman. It was a tough one to get on the end of Victoria Andre Flo. Agat sets up Larson. Scott Wilson still can't get hold of it. Larson's layoff. Out wide with Petter. Petter takes on Rickson. Cleared by Contamund, but straight at Lennon. Celtic with the chance to keep the pressure on. Petter did so much of the damage, of course, which led to Rickson's early substitution in the 6-2 match. In from Sutton, just too high for Henrik Larsson. But it's a corner kick. Henrik Larsson always a danger at the back course, of course. Uh, excellent on the ground, but uh, not too bad near as well. Johan Mielby trying to find some room, in from Thompson, and it won't count. Ramon Vega headed the ball into the back of the net, but the whistle had already gone for an infringement. And the referee making an instant decision there, Ray Cross making no attempt to go for that ball. Don't think there was any doubt uh, that there was a little bit of pushing in the box here. Hugh Dallas was certainly close enough to decide he was right in the heart of the six-yard box. And the cheers were muted. After 
Adam Newman for Neil McCann. Fouled by Lambert. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Paul Lambert goes in a little bit late here. Fortunately, I don't think he does uh, too much damage to Neil McCann there. Uh, McCann up very quickly indeed, so he doesn't look up. Long ball from Wilson. Yalby and Vega both went for it for Celtic. And it's the Swiss defender who comes away with the ball. And Tom Boyd's clearance. Straight to Contraman. Over the elaborate Contraman, and Rangers now in trouble. Bobby Petter with a chance to create. Contraman makes up for his error. And that's a wild one from Fernando Rickson. Barry Ferguson protesting immediately to Hugh Dallas because he knows what's about to happen. It's the first yellow card of the match. And it's Rickson. Which immediately, well, he puts him on a tightrope. It does. Um, I, I thought it was a rather impetuous tackle. I, I didn't think uh, there was any need for it at all. It always looked as though Larson uh, was getting to the ball uh, first. He goes down rather heavily. Rickson coming in late. I, I don't think he can have any complaints. He's not happy with the situation there, but uh, referee Dallas, in my opinion, making the absolutely correct decision and clamping down on that challenge. Don't think there was any doubt that it deserved a yellow card. Yeah, the foul was on Alan Thompson, but um, not much doubt about it, as Willie said. And Thompson with the free kick. It's a good delivery. Flicked away at the far post by Arthur Newman. Rangers will feel it's so important that they have to get their marking right at the set pieces. And they have to be so physically strong to stand up to what Celtic have to throw at them. And Rangers will now have to withstand another corner kick. Last touch off Arthur Newman. So Mialbi at the near post. Henrik Larsson almost on the goal line. Kenny Miller's header. Flicks it away from the danger area, but it's not out. And Petter's cross. Deflected off Rickson. And another corner kick. The pressure is mounting. There's a wider view of the penalty box. It's man for man. Thompson's corner kick. Sutton got the header. And again, there's Mialbi. Henrik Larsson! Spectacular efforts. And with Larson, you're almost expecting him to score. You do. I mean, that is a very difficult uh, opportunity for Henley Larson, but uh, he is such a, a class player that uh, you wouldn't have been surprised if that ended up in the box. But uh, once again, I feel Rangers not defending the cross particularly well. They look a little bit nervous at the heart of that defence, allowing Celtic to have that opportunity, albeit only a half chance. Since he's been at Celtic, Henrik Larsson has been ripping up the record books, and another one which is under threat is Brian McClear's 15-year-old record for league goals. He scored 35, and Larsson is already on 31. As the free kick is given for Ferguson's nudge on Sutton. He survived worse than that, I think. Chris Sutton so keen to be part of this battle. Vega with the free kick. Scott Wilson got his head to it. Alberts. Sutton works it on to Petta. Flicked away by Newman. Rangers have to organise. A Gats cross. Away by Contiman. Neil Lennon. Well wide. But some shaky signs in the Rangers' defence, will it? Yeah, they, they, they look very nervous. Uh, big advocate there, very pensive indeed. He knows that he, his back three so far has, 
have looked a little bit shaky. Cross balls coming into the box. The headers have been poor. They've not been clearing the ball at all. It's coming off the side of their head. They, they, they just look nervous. They're not positive in going and winning that ball. And I'm sure they can have a get at this moment in time. We'll be concerned about the way his team's playing. Barry Ferguson's challenge on Alan Thompson. No free kick. Thompson felt it. And Ferguson was quick to react to the response from the crowd because they didn't fancy the challenge but Hugh Dallas happy to let it go Ferguson and Thompson of course both been sent off this season in the old farm match Thompson's header and again early ball from Petter Chris Sutton. Rickson had to play it. And the Celtic supporters letting Fernando Rickson know what they think of him. I don't think it's too complimentary. No, I don't think so, but uh, interesting to see uh, Hugh Dallas just having a little word there, a little quiet word. Barry Ferguson uh, just getting a little quiet word there from Hugh Dallas. He's, he's had a couple of challenges there, just a little bit late, um, obviously trying to stamp his mark on the game, but I think referee Dallas just a little bit concerned. Sixteen minutes gone, still no goals. Larson's flick to Sutton. Henry Larson again. Here's a chance. And Celtic will open the scoring. And it's Alan Thompson. Celtic picked a hole in the centre of the Rangers' defence. And it's Thompson who makes it 1 0. We've, we've spoken about it, they look very nervous at the heart of that defence again. Getting dragged all over the place, huge gap. Larson laying the ball in for Thompson, good support from to Thompson. Easy opportunity at the end of the day, but uh, very concerning from a Rangers point of view. The amount of space that Celtic found through the heart of that defence. But uh, Henry Larson going for a little touch in from Sutton, lovely little roll pass to him and super support from Thompson from midfield and that was a reasonably easy opportunity for a man of this calibre Rangers in defensive disarray and Alan Thompson's fourth goal of the season and a Celtic in the driving seat just the start these Celtic supporters were looking for yeah, the team's done well, I feel. I, I think in the first 15 minutes or so of this game, they've totally dominated the proceedings. Uh, Rangers looking very nervous. Haven't really mounted any sort of a good play forward. Looked very nervous at the back. And you're just feeling before that goal came that it was only a matter of time. Tori Andre flows header. Kenny Miller trying to get on the end of it. Jousting with Tom Boyd and Fernando Wixon shot off Neil Lennon. And Rangers have a corner kick, their first of the match. But flipped off the leg of former Leicester midfielder Lennon. Rangers would love to make something of this. They've had little attacking play so far. Neil McCann's delivery. Speared in at that near post, and Chris Sutton taking the responsibility. And knocking the ball behind for take two. Wilson and Contraman and Malcolm all up. Alongside Miller and Rickson and Flo and Alberts. And again, it's that man Sutton. It was a repeat from Neil McCann. He really does whip them in at that near post. And if a Rangers head gets a touch to it, they could be back on terms. McCann tries again. It's Alberts, he couldn't keep it down though. That was exactly what McCann was looking for, but a slighter touch, and that might have been in. 
Yeah, I worked it to the, the third attempt, but I felt that George Albert was looking to try to get that one in target when really, if you're putting them into the near post like that, all you're really wanting them to do is get a little touch on it just to deflect it to pass the Celtic defenders that are in there and looking for support at the back post. So perhaps Albert, on that occasion, they're taking the wrong option. Larson and Sutton combine as they've done so well in their time together this season. What a moment that was for Alan Thompson, blasting the ball past Stefan Klaus, and a chance that he really couldn't miss from that sort of range, six yards out. A chance to put Celtic in front. Scott Wilson with his work cut out for them this afternoon. It's a big day for Wilson and Malcolm, and Conterman too. Well, it was new it was going to be to try to cope with Larson and Sutton, and it's those two again threatening. Conterman back to Kloss. Stefan Kloss has pulled off some brilliant saves in his time against Celtic, but he had little chance in stopping Thompson from point blank range. And Petta turning on the style. Alan Thompson was looking for a free kick. He reckoned there was a late challenge there. Hugh Dallas indicating he should get back to his feet. Petter gets the better of Rickson. Lambert driving into a hole. Lead off by Sutton. But Bobby Petter couldn't get there in time. He started the match well as Petter. And he is a real threat. And again, Fernando Rickson in this fixture is under real pressure. He certainly is, and the fact that he's got the yellow card, of course, he's really going to have to watch what he does in terms of challenges. But uh, Petter has been excellent in this uh, first 20 minutes or so, uh, looking to get forward at uh, every occasion, and also working very hard off the ball. He's putting Rickson under pressure, or any defender that comes out there under severe pressure, and winning the ball back early for Celtic. Petter switching it from left to right with that crossfield pass to Didier Agat. Those two made a fatal contribution this season in terms of Celtic's success. With Agat down one side, Petter down the other, Larson and Sutton through the middle. The opposition team is never quite sure where the greatest threat is coming from. Dutch international continent. Less than convincing in his early times at Ibrox. He's looked a bit more like his old self recently. It's a foul by Boyd on Miller. Tom Boyd filling in for Jos Valhada. He's injured, but he's badly injured as first feared. Harry Ferguson's free kick aimed at Tori Andre Flo. Runs through for Neil McCann. Surrounded by hoop shirts, one of them Didier Agat. McCann does well to hold possession, but that's a loose pass in field. Agat's pace got him to the ball before Arthur Newman. And a free kick is given. He was caught late. Yeah, Arthur Newman coming in there a little bit late, a couple of late challenges there, Barry Ferguson, he's going to have to watch what he's doing again, in with a late challenge, fortunately I, I thought both challenges were late, but didn't take too much uh, contact on the opponents, where Dallas right on the spot as well, I think he assessed the situation and just uh, let it go without taking any action. Roman Vega's free kick, headed away by Scott Wilson. Thompson for Petta. Rickson won it, Barry Ferguson took far too long, although his complaint might be that nobody of his teammates was telling him that he was about to be robbed of possession. Thompson to Lennon. Celtic running the show. And that's a foul by Wilson on Larson. 
He better calm himself down or he'll be joining Fernando Rickson in the book. A tackle from the back on Larson. That means a free kick. And that is calmly being explained to him now by Hugh Dallas. Yeah, and I think rightly so, uh, Wilson's shown a bit of petulance there after he put the, 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 the tackle in. I don't think there was any doubt that it was a challenge from behind and an illegal challenge, referee Dallas deciding that it was a free kick and I think it was right. Set-piece chance for Celtic in from Lennon and Ramon Vega almost there and great credit to Bert Conteman, he did exactly what he has to do and that was get there first. That's right, that's more like it, uh, you know, if you've got a central defender in there, that's a, a difficult one uh, to defend, uh, Vega breathing down his neck, had to be quick, Conteman. Lennon's cross again, and the header from Chris Sutton needed a touch, Ramon Vega was close to applying that touch, and he couldn't quite get there before it was grabbed by Stefan Klaus. We've seen very little of Rangers as a creative force so far. They really are on the back foot. Celtic working hard at minimising their opportunities on the ball. And Rangers forced all the way back to their goalkeeper. Our next live match uh, features Celtic again, that's at East End Park in less than a month's time. Then Fermont against Celtic. But for now, it's BBC Live at the old firm match. Celtic, a goal up. And almost 26 minutes gone. Rangers have a free kick. And they want to... Involve Robert Douglas in the action before too much longer. Tori Andre Flo positioning himself just inside the box. Conterman and Malcolm are forward. Alberts trying a shot at goal and it cannons back off the wall. Has it back now from Ritzer. Chested down by Flo, tried to nod it back to Conterman. Lennon was there. forward by Thompson ahead of Larson Vega against Flo won it well Agat trying to hold off Neil McCann his pace and his power Didier Agat and that's a hefty combination Larson playing an unplanned 1-2 off Fernando Rickson. And Rickson using his elbow there. And he could be in real trouble. Already booked. And Hugh Dallas over to keep a close eye as that little tussle progresses. Poor one from Newman. And at the second attempt, played it off Agat, his throw. Conterman. Melby always likely to win an aerial tussle with Neil McCann. Willie, Fernando Rickson obviously walking a dangerous line there. Yeah, he is. Uh, Dallas, um, referee Dallas was right on the spot there. He gave him an evil stare, um, obviously, indicating to Rickson that, uh, you know, if there was any attempt, intent there against an opponent, that uh, Dallas won't to put up with anything like that in the future. I think he is walking a very, very tight line. Arthur Newman takes the ball away from Chris Sutton. Melby. Lennon, back to Douglas. 
Celtic with almost total control. Yeah, total control. I think Rangers struggling badly, particularly in midfield. They've only got two players in midfield against Rangers, three of course. Superb pass from Thompson. It's Petter. And the cross between Larson and Sutton. That looked like a real opportunity to carve out a second goal. But Celtic back in possession again. Larson to a gut. Over Rickson's head to Petter. Bobby Petter's cross, missed by Malcolm and Wilson. Cleared by Newman. A lot of indecision in the way Rangers are defending here. And playing against Larson and Sutton, they're always likely to get punished. Here comes Emmett Larson. Chris Sutton, shot blocked by Malcolm, corner kick. Just an um, a number of players uh, in the Rangers back five really have to do some more. Um, Henrik Larson, of course, always a threat, and Sutton's strength too, but uh, Rickson not handling Petter well at all. I think uh, Petter has by far got the better of him. Rickson looking very nervous indeed, and, and Petter looking to get to the byline every opportunity, and Rangers really have got to defend better. Thompson's going to kick. Stefan Kloss. Didn't get both hands to it, but whistle had gone for an infringement. A little bit fortunate, I thought, to uh, Claus coming out for this one. Didn't seem to be too much uh, contact there, perhaps a little arm up there uh, from Vega onto the back of Claus, but I uh, felt as though Claus wasn't really going to get too uh, much on that ball anyway. I've got the benefit of the doubt there, I think, Stefan Claus. The way things are going. You, re you would reckon it's only a matter of time before Celtic make it two. Long ball from Vega. Sutton hot in pursuit. And Klaus outside his area to clear. Lambert to Petta. And Paul Lambert immediately hearing away for the return. Since challenge. Still Alan Thompson's goal, separating these two sides in terms of the scoreline, but there's so much between them in terms of overall play. Petters cross, Scott Wilson's header, onto it, Neil Lennon, Alan Thompson. Into the feet of Henrik Larsson. Slipped as he tried to work that one back towards Thompson. Flow beaten by Mialvi, who's seen very little of the 12 million pound striker so far. Mialvi playing the ball to where he thought Didier Agat should be. Sadly, he was standing alongside him at the time. Yeah, just a little bit of misunderstanding, but uh, from a Rangers point of view, I think uh, they've got to ask more of Flo up front. Um, I think uh, Dick Advocat will, will be trying to get that message on. I, I don't feel that uh, they've got much option other than going the route one, going from back to front, trying to hit Flo and getting a little bit of support. They're really having no joy at all through that midfield. Celtic totally dominating in there. And there is another long ball. From Contamin to Flo. Not a down, but not a down for Lambert. Plays a 1 2 off Sutton. Larson against Wilson. Wilson wins. Albert's holding off the challenge of Chris Sutton. Contraman from McCann. Don't think that's really the ball that Neil McCann is wanting. No, it's not. I'm sure he's wanting it to his feet, but uh, he did exceptionally well there and, and winning the little flick on. But, uh, you know, even with Rangers playing three up front, uh, they, they seem very detached. They're, they're not working as a unit. McCann wins that ball, but he's got no support at all from the other two. But I would suggest if they're going to go route one and play it in there, then it really is flow that they've got to try and hit. 
and then get to a reaction from the two frontmen. A lot of that support from midfield. Larson's flick. In goes Petta. Punched away by Stefan Kors and grounded inside the penalty box is Petta. Looked as if Kors punched the ball and then the player. Yeah, I, I don't think there was any malice here. It was a ball that Kloss really had to go for. Petter just getting in there slightly before him, but I'm sure it came off of uh, Kloss' fist, and it was a fist that uh, followed through and, and caught Petter. I really think uh, that was an accidental clash. Yeah, I don't think there was anything malicious about that at all from Stefan Kloss, but I don't think that makes Bobby Petter feel any better at the moment. No, I'm sure he's got uh, a little bit of a headache uh, down there just now. Took that one in the side of the face. He, he's up on his feet, he seemed to be OK. Of course, he'll have to go to the side of the pitch, but uh, really doesn't look as though that's going to be too necessary and he should be able to resume pretty quickly. This was certainly decisive goalkeeping, and it had to be from Klaus. It was a real danger if Penta had got a little flick, but that was two. But again, it comes uh, from, I think, uncertain defending. You know, balls played in there, Rangers defenders should be going and winning them. Should be an easy part of the game. They seem a little bit apprehensive. They're not winning the headers. They start to get little, little flick-ons, and then Rangers defence not reacting quick enough. Sutton, Larson's there. Corner kick. Didier Agat was enough of a threat to Arthur Newman. Forced the Rangers defender to knock the ball behind. And set pieces like this always a threat to Rangers when you see the likes of Vega and Mialbi joining Sutton and Larson in the area. In from Thompson. That was Malcolm. And Newman both went for it. That looked like a push on Barry Ferguson. Free kick given against Bobby Petter. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt there. A um, little push in the back there. Barry Ferguson, uh, Petter giving him um, a push in, in causing a foul. Really, a little bit too unfortunate from a Celtic point of view because Rangers, under a lot of pressure, still not dealing with the cross ball uh, particularly well, and that has always given Celtic uh, the opportunity to keep the screw turned and keep the pressure on them. There's a neat touch from Petter. And again, tangling with Rickson. It's an intriguing tussle between these two. Less than eight minutes of the first half remaining. That's good covering from Rickson after Malcolm was beaten. A towering header from Vega. But Larson coming back from an offside position. If Celtic are to win here today, they will stretch their lead over Rangers to 12 points. With 12 games left. It's no title decider this, but it could have a huge pairing on where the championship ends up. Thompson's pass. Contraman, short with the pass for Kloss. And good thinking from Paul Lambert. Needed to lift it a little bit higher, and if he'd done so, it could have been 2-0. Yeah, it could have been a lovely through ball from Thompson. Contamin just a little bit short with the back pass, and Lambert smartly onto it. Just needed a little bit more air in that chip. He saw the opportunity, he saw Klaus off his goal. He was going for goal, and he just didn't get enough elevation in it. Good play from Rickson. Contraman having a look at what's on. Strong defending from Yalbi. And now Celtic on the move again with Lambert. Slowing the game down, Lambert. With Lennon and Lambert in his side, you're unlikely to give the ball away too much. 
Well, there looked to be a lot more man about the challenge than ball there for Bert Contemann. Free kick given. I mean, that shouldn't be allowed in a football part, to be careful honest with you. Different shape of ball you want to be playing with if you're going to put in a challenge like that. I think Contemann getting a little bit frustrated there. Absolutely no need to put in the tackle. Only 10 yards inside his own half. He should have been sitting off of Larson. He knows Larson's got good pace. And uh, for Contemann, you're looking for experience. Didn't show his experience there. You're not a poacher turned gamekeeper by any chance, are you? I don't think I put too many challenges in like that. So I like to think I timed them a little bit better and perhaps used uh, my intelligence more. Malcolm, back to Kloss. Again, it's jittery defending from Rangers. Nothing much convincing about it. Alberts to Flo. Flo is something Rangers have had little of in this first match. In this first half, I should say. There's little fluency about their performance. Constantly on the back foot. And creaking under pressure. Hopefully somebody's going to be checking through the video tapes to see if Willie Miller's claims are based on fact at all. Ferguson to Rickson. Just over four minutes left. In a Celtic-dominated first half. You'd be hard pushed to say Celtic aren't on the way to the title when you view their superiority here. That's a foul on Rickson by Petta. You get the feeling there's a strong element of tit for tat <laughs> in what's going on here. Uh, I think there's a little bit of animosity over that far side, isn't there? Um, Petta this time putting the late challenge in and Rickson and... I don't think there's any doubt that uh, he left his boot in a little bit there, you know, Rickson going down, perhaps making uh, the most of it, but uh, the way these two players have been going at each other uh, this afternoon and in previous games, um, I think Rickson's got every right to, to make the most of it. Wilson's free kick, finding the head of Torrey Andre Flo. But yet again, for Rangers, the knockdown leads to nothing. And it's comfortable defending for Celtic. A hesitation from Henrik Larsson. And another infringement by Bert Contemann. And this time action will be taken. He allowed Larsson to get on the wrong side here, will he? Yeah. I mean, the fact that he's booked, I don't think he can have any complaints at all. Uh, it's a combination of the previous challenge in Larson um, and this one. It's all down to his own making, really, allowing that ball to, to go past him, uh, slipping a little bit and then getting tangled up with Larson again. Referee Dallas absolutely correct. Thompson's free kick. Free kick is given to Rangers for the challenge from Scott Wilson. Not a decision which goes down too well with the home support. Oh, again, a, a correct one. Looked as though that there was uh, quite a lot, of, a lot of body contact there in the box. And I think in these occasions the referee is liable to go with the defender. A minute to be added, so three in all left in the first half. Vega struck in the face by the arm of Flo. I'm not too sure how much that was malicious. Tori, Tori Andrew Flo, not renowned as a dirty player. No. I thought it was accidental. I mean, you've got to use uh, some hard movement to get a little bit of purchase when you're jumping for a ball, and I didn't think there was much in there. You don't see it too well there, but uh, Dallas again was right in the spot. He had a word with Vega not to make too much of it because I thought it was accidental. I didn't think uh, it did too much damage to Vega, and the last thing you want for an innocuous challenge is this game to get out of hand. That seems like sensible refereeing from, almost said Willie Miller there, from Hugh Dallas. 
Ferguson's pass finds Albert. Beyond flow, cleared by Vega. Chris Sutton's there first. And now a gant. It's the furthest forward Tom Boyd's been. Playing as an auxiliary left winger at the moment, Tom Boyd. And it's a red card for Rickson. One foul too many as far as Hugh Dallas is concerned. Second yellow adds up to red. And Rickson's troubled Rangers career gets no better. And there was always signs that it was going to flare up uh, with Rickson. He's had so many challenges, late challenges, and I really can't complain. There is absolutely no need for him to go into that challenge out in the touchline. Tom Boyd taking it. Rickson comes in late. Referee Dallas, yellow card, and he's off. Thompson's free kick. Vega's there. And the whistle's gone. There was pushing going on. Rangers get some respite. Not much more than 30 seconds left of this first half, which goes from bad to worse for Rangers. A crazy challenge by Fernando Rickson when you've already been yellow carded and had the finger wagged in your face for numerous other challenges as well. Dick Advocat must be absolutely fuming with uh, one of his signings of last summer, his fellow Dutchman Rickson, who you would have to say has let his manager down badly here. And his teammates as well. That's half time. Rangers one goal down. Alan Thompson scored. And now one man down as well, with Rickson having been sent off. Celtic are running the show, dominating the proceedings. And it's difficult, Willie, to see any way back for Rangers. Well, you'd have thought that uh, perhaps getting in at half-time and reorganising 11 men then they maybe had a chance in the second half, the fact that uh, there's only one goal in it at half-time, but uh, with that moment of madness from Rickson, the Gavagat now is going to have to reshuffle the pack with only 10 men on the pack. They've been well behind when it's been an even contest. They're a man down. You cannot see them doing anything in the second half. It's been, again, totally dominated by Celtic, strong at the back. Totally dominating in midfield and up front. Uh, Larson and Sutton controlling things. Really cutting Rangers apart. Rangers very nervous at the back. Their back three haven't performed well at all. They've never built anything up in midfield where they've only got two players. And up front, Flo and uh, his two mate, teammates up front have been very disappointing. So at half time, you've got to say that uh, Celtic are well worthy of the lead. The only uh, strange thing is that it is only by one goal. And here is the goal which has made the difference so far. Larson and Sutton involved in the build-up. And a very straightforward finish for Alan Thompson with 16 minutes gone. Stefan Kloss beaten. And Rangers looking very much a beaten side. The faces of the Rangers players as they trooped up that tunnel, I think for me, told their own story. They look punch-drunk because Celtic have taken charge from kickoff and never let go. Rangers in disarray and a half-time trail by one goal to nil. A breather and a cup of tea. There are plenty of talking points as ever in this fixture. And fortunately, we have two men who know how to talk. Um, Graham, the 45 minutes, what have you made of it so far? I slightly disagree with Willie. I don't think Celtic have um, run riot. I think they've got a very fortunate goal. Um, bad defending by Rangers. When the ball eventually arrives, who was it? Was attempting a shot. It's bobbled and come Larson, square Larson again. Tried, yeah. Was it Larson, Larson tried to shoot? shoot yeah. He's opened his body out to shoot. It scrummed off in the challenge, and it's fell nicely for Thompson. Um, Cel Celtic are boss midfield, and if you're boss midfield, you're going to control the game. You know, Rangers have Fergie and Alberts in there against Lambert, Lennon. And Thompson. 
Thompson. And they're and they're bossing it. Yeah. You know, Rangers are going with three up front, McCann, Miller and Flo, and it's not happening for them. And it's leaving them a man short in midfield. Celtic are bossing midfield, and that for me is, is where he has to try and readjust. You know, when you look at Flo, people would think Flo is a target man. He's six foot four maybe. He's not a target man. And they're trying to use him as a target man today. You know, Vega is just bossing him. You know, he's coming through him, he's too strong for him. Um, I know that I know that Rangers have lots of injuries, but the team that put out today, it's just not happening for them. It's not happening for them, and he has to make changes. And the, the sending off. Well, you know, when you it's look at it, for them now, you know, you, I think you, you mentioned before we start, you know, when things are not happening for you, you know, the goal for argument's sake, lucky bobble, falls nicely for Thompson, the sending off, you know, things are just not happening for them. Maybe it's. Give it to him now, don't even worry about this. <laughs> well, well, the big concern for Dick Advocate may be the fact that, that Rangers, certainly in terms of going forward, have offered absolutely nothing. Well, in terms of what Graham says there about running right, I don't think they have, but I think they've been as, it's, it's been as comfortable a performance as I've seen Celtic play against Rangers for a long time. They've dominated it without running right in terms of having chances at goal, but Rangers have not offered any threat whatsoever. And the midfield is the, is the area, and Neil Lennon, for me, has just bossed it completely, because he's sat in front of that three, there's nobody there to mark him, there's nobody making, poking a challenge on him. If they, if they want to come out, they can use him to switch play, he picks all the little knockdowns there, and he's just doing the job he's, he's sat there to do. The three up front for Rangers have offered no threat whatsoever. I was concerned, actually, if McCann could get up against Starr. Yeah, me, I'll be there. Albie's never bothered. They've gone. We talked about this before, didn't we? About three up front. Their back three of Celtic. The back Dick, three have said, we'll, we'll handle this. There's no problem. Goal, but it's not working. And Neil Lennon's a spare man there, and he just keeps getting the ball and picking it up. And the two up front for uh, for Celtic, they're a good partnership at the at the minute. And they hold it up and they allow the team to get up and they're causing problems. Like I said, they've not had loads and loads of chances, but the players being all in Rangers' uh, defensive half, and it's been a comfortable performance. I don't know what he's going to do now. He's got to, he's got to rearrange with well, ten men. And that's going before to be the sending him. off, I, at half time I was thinking what I was going to say. Before the sending off, I was going to say get two guy on mm. and go three against three in midfield. Sacrifice Miller or McCann and go three against three, three in midfield and see if that starts to get a bit more of the ball further up the park. But he can't do that now. He's yeah. now down to ten men. What he does, we'll have to wait and see. But that's where they've lost it in midfield um, and not getting hold of very it. Poor, very poor performance Nothing was sticking by the, up from Rangers. Very, they, they don't even look. I, I was you know, I was sat there, there watching it and uh, they're not even looking for the ball, they're not even making angles. There's times I was watching them and, I'm, and you know, you're looking at them just as a football and you see and you think, well, if he sticks it, then it doesn't happen. But they're not making angles, they're not even looking to play and they look like a team who are a bag of nerves and not enjoying playing as a midfield today. player. You must something that your ball comes from back to front. It must, something must stick up front. For Rangers today, yeah. nothing is stopped. Still. The ball's back down your throat. You're playing it forward. You go to get what you say, make an angle to receive a ball, and the ball's come back over your shoulder. It's nothing well, sticking. Let's just take a look at some of the incidents. Then Celtic had the chances early on. Vega had the goal disallowed. We know the whistle went very early. Did you have any doubts about? Well, you see the goalkeeper's reaction. He doesn't even make an attempt for it. So it must have gone really early. Yeah. Was there any reason why it should have gone? He, he, he blew as the, he asked, the, the whistle appeared to go as the kick was taken. Yeah. So there must have been some infringement somewhere just as it was taken. And I, we can't even see it on there. It looks a perfectly it good goal. It doesn't, but he blown very, very early. He must have seen something. Henrik Larsson hasn't had too many chances. He, he did have one very There's good There's not been a lot of chances in the game. No, sure. Hen Henrik Larsson, the, the effort earlier on the, the overhead kick. Well, I, I don't think it's uh, of any, any great chances, as Graham just said there. And. Uh, I think it goes well over, doesn't it? From, it's, it's very early on in the game. Up, this. But it's one thing it's about, you're looking for that bit of magic from oh, yeah. Well, he's got that. He's, he's what is, it, what is interesting there? No, it's not so much the chances. How the ball is allowed to bounce and bobble around in there, and not one Rangers player has actually taken the uh, decision to actually go and try and clear it. And then when it does, it's dropped to Larson. Mm. Uh, Larson has a go. And, and the goal, it wasn't long in coming. And was it a similar situation there that no Rangers player really took command in the situation? The ball. <laughs> They let them out they of this corner, didn't they? They seem to get sort of mixed up with each other. Um, but that's no danger. That is no threat it, at all. It's it's here. Now he goes to shoot here, and it squirms nicely and comes out for Thompson. That wasn't a pass, but that's you know when it's going for you, it's going for you. If if you've got enough of the ball in opposition's box, sooner or later you're going to get a lucky bounce, you're going to get a bobble, or somebody does a bit of magic. As it's turned out today. 
he gets a lucky shows lucky, you Celtic dance. players getting forward though if you look at it as, as they look as they're going to have a chance here they've got two or three running in the box and, and that's you know when things are going well for you you will have players running forward sure. trying to get in the box trying to score goals and uh, they did they got, a, they got a stroke of fortune but it was bad defending because there was like, no threat from the throw like in. you say Rangers have not looked convincing in anything they're trying to do there's no conviction the way they pass the ball in there's no aggression when they're going in to put any tackles on well you can see the right back's aggressive but that's not aggressive in my book no, you know there's been nothing really positive about them today and they've, they've set a team out to try and win the game by going three up front and it's just not worth it's just not happened well, one other chance to have a look at and Stefan Kloss we've seen him coming off his line on a number of occasions he, he's maybe having to do that because of the, the way the men in front of him were playing. It was Paul Lambert eventually who had the effort here, but um, Klaus had to, to, to look very sharp. He's been playing sweeper on a couple of occasions, hasn't he? We see that there again. Look where you're losing the ball. Look where you're having the ball taken off you. In the most important area of the park, smack in the middle of the park, people are losing challenges. Your back three are always going to be under pressure. It was an awful back pass to the keeper, actually, there. He left him short, then he gave him a 50 50 with Chris Sutton, which is not really what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was unlucky, Lambert. He was unlucky not to, not to chip him. Let's look, the, we spoke beforehand, discipline was always going to be a major talking point. We've seen, well, the, the bookings and also the red card. Have, have a look at the bookings. It's not it was been the, the game's not been in discipline for me. I and mean, this is just, this is a, it's a late challenge. It's, it's one of them that you get in an old firm game. It's a booking. There's no yeah. question in my mind. But I don't think the game's been bad. It's yeah. not been nasty. It's not the, been any real bad you know, challenges. The one big difference, it? and I felt that when I was manager of Glasgow Rangers up here, and especially in this game, the crowd, the, the crowd put so much pressure on the referee. You know, anything that's happened down that right back area, in England they would shout yeah. from their seats. Anything happens down on that right hand side today, the crowd are out their seats and the referee might think, if he doesn't get a great look at the situation or the incident, might think that was worse than than I thought it was, and he ends up reacting to what the crowd did. I think the ref's been all right, though. I don't think the oh, ref's right. I think Hugh Dallas has been fine. He's, I think, I, I, I'm not talking about just today, but yeah. I think it's been emphasized what happens, what's happened his down second, that His second here. challenge is gross stupidity. Well, right we'll right. come to that in a moment. He's, Bobby Petter, the, the only Celtic booking so far, uh, did he have any complaints uh, in terms of this yellow card? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that's nothing. I don't think yeah. that's a that's booking. That's in the context of the game. He, he wasn't well, going to get off that, was he? That's nothing. I mean, you're asking two fellas here about that. I don't think that's a booking. Right. Bert Conteman should have been booked and then was booked a couple of minutes later. And you're not going to criticise the referee in this one, presumably. No, he's... No, because Larson's done well. He's, 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 he's got him and made him turn round, yeah. which, is, which is a four. He's done a great job. And then he's done, he's nicked it off him and Conteman was clumsy. Conteman's hesitated because, as you've been saying, no one was shown for the ball. The ball's coming to him. He's got his setup, he's got plenty of time in the ball. He's got nothing to hit other than just lump it forward. He chooses not to do that and is closed down by that. There's none of those bad incidents, though. No, sure. No, no. Fernando Rickson, um, the first Old Firm game here, he lasted about 20 minutes and then he was hooked because he was having a nightmare. <laughs> this time, um, he lasted a bit longer. What about this? In my naive, opinion, naive. stupidity. Just he's been booked. He's been. He's had a finger wagging after that. You know, that's not. That's that's not a you know, nasty incident. But he's been booked. He's been told off since. And when you keep doing that, you're going to get another booking. Is that down to the occasion? You spoke about it earlier. Players, some players just just lose their their mind in a situation like this. Well, his, his lack of responsibility shown to his teammates, anyway, that's for sure. Lack of, you know, it's, it's sometimes called professionalism, and professionalism is being professional, he's staying on the field, getting back into the dressing room, as, and as Graham said, see what then the manager, manager can do to rearrange. It's got a problem now with it's, 10 men. It's a major problem for him. Graham, we're hearing, you, you suggested that two guys should come on, we're hearing he is coming on, he's going to replace Kenny Miller. Yeah, but he's still got the pro. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, who's going to play at the back? He's still got the problem. I mean, before before the sending off, I thought if two guy comes on, because he can get hold of it. Ferguson can get hold of it. Alberts, we know what Alberts is, he's a goal threat, but he doesn't take part in a lot of the non-attractive work in midfield, the closing down, getting the ball back for you. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it. He's putting two guy on. He's taking who off? He's, he's Miller. Kenny Miller's gone. I mean, he has played McCann through the middle from time, so there is that option. You've also got the option, I suppose, of Flo on his own, McCann mm. wide, and, and then getting support from midfield. Yeah, but he's still got to find a right-sided defender. Yeah. yeah well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> um, Mick, do, do you expect to see any significant change in terms of the way the game is going in the second half? If it, uh, if it continues the way it continued in the first half with the possession that Celtic had, Celtic will spank them. If they have the same amount of possession against ten men, 
they've, they've got to they've got to get hold of the ball have range and try and keep hold of it. If they don't and give possession to Celtic, they'll get chances. They'll win by a few more. Okay, thanks to Graham, thanks to Mick. Uh, much more to come from them at the end, and we're about to get the answers to all the questions we've been asking during the interval. Two guys coming on there, as you see. That's here from Willie Miller and Rob McLean. Dick will hope that his team like a challenge because they certainly have one here. One goal down at half time to Celtic. Outplayed. Celtic took charge of the midfield early on and never let go. And now comes the tactical reshuffle from Advocat, not under the circumstances in which he would have wanted to have made it. He would have preferred to have done that with 11 on the pitch. But two guy is on, and here's the crime count so far. Two yellows for Rickson, meaning that he's still in the dressing room. Contraman booked as well. He has to tread a weary path. And Bobby Petter, yellow carded for Celtic. The BBC Scotland live match. Celtic against Rangers. Alan Thompson with the only goal so far. And Rangers with a mountain to climb. Two guys, first touch. Sorry, Andre Flo. Flo again. In from Malcolm. Two guy combines with Ferguson. Rangers have to have a go, but it's not easy. Ten against eleven. Neil McCann trying to find room for the cutback. Alberts connected well with the volley, but couldn't quite keep it down. No, I couldn't, but it, uh, it was a fantastic strike again, just uh, a little bit too high uh, with the left foot. But uh, that just goes to show that uh, you're never out of the game when it's when it's 1-0. Celtic only having that one goal advantage with someone like uh, George Albers about. Something special from outside the box could get it back in level terms, even although Celtic have had the bulk of possession. Paul Lambert won the header. Free kick. For handball against Eric Contiman and Martin O'Neill. Now less than 45 minutes away from what would be a vital three points if Celtic retain the control they've had so far. Lennon's free kick off Sutton. Hammered away by Scott Wilson. Possession back with Celtic. Petta away from Malcolm. And stretching out was George Alberts. He had to get that one absolutely right. Otherwise, that was heading behind his compatriot, Stefan Kloss. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, not an easy situation to be in to defend properly. George Alberts going back towards his own goal. Could quite easily have deflected that into the back of his own net. Just managed to get a slight touch on it, deflected for the corner. Alan Thompson's corner kick. Punched away by Kloss. And Barry Ferguson completes the clearance. Change of direction from Petter, gets him away from Tugai, in for Vega, and Arthur Newman mopping up at the far post. Chris Sutton was endeavouring to get on the end of Vega's flick. Yeah, it's a lovely lot to flick there for Petter, and a, a super cross into the box, Vega getting a little flick on it. Rangers defender just getting his head to it at the back post, but the testing times once again so early in the second half for Rangers. The pressure stays on, Thompson's corner kick, that's a good catch from Kloss. In a busy goal mouth. Two guy, Ferguson. McCann, little burst of pace, gets him away from a gat. Tori Andre Flo. Still has it. 
Alberts. Looking on the bright side for Rangers, that's a shot on target. Oh, it is, and it's quite amazing, isn't it, to see Rangers play like this? Great pass through, flow showing good pace there. You know, just eventually running out of room, but to managing to lay it back for Alberts to have the strike. The searing pace again of Agats. That was just behind Larson. And played out by Kloss to Tugai. Agat starting several yards behind Newman and outpacing him. The bodies scattered all over the pitch at the moment. Roman Vega is one of them. I think it's just a little bit uh, of time for calm from the referee. A uh, couple of sharp tackles coming in there, flow a little bit late uh, with the challenge, but uh, I, I think in this occasion um, it just has to be calmed down. I think uh, Dallas is doing the right thing, not, not making too much of it. Uh, maybe Raymond Vega won't agree with me there. He looks as though he's in a little bit of pain, but uh, the last thing you want is the game to get out of hand. You, you want to keep as many players on the park as possible. The fans have came here to watch a game of football that is balanced and so far actually in the second half it is unbalanced but it's as close as we've saw to a competition because Rangers have started to play a little bit. I think with two guys coming in to the midfield that then allows Rangers to have 3v3 in there, an area where they were totally dominated in the, in the first half. And I think in the second half they're looking much more comfortable being able to pass the ball about and, and start creating something. So let's hope it continues in that vein for the sake of the game. He's been grounded for several minutes now. Ramon Vega, but slowly getting back to his feet. And some instructions being passed on, not maybe directly to Bobby Petter, but through Bobby Petter. And Martin O'Neill will be looking at the scoreline and thinking... That's a, a fragile advantage. So the words were for Thompson, and a nod of the head tells Martin O'Neill the message has got through. But uh, the Celtic manager will feel he wants another goal to squeeze Rangers out of this. That's Contraman. Lennon's header. Petter was first there, but it's well won by two guy. He's been in good form for Rangers in recent weeks. Newman, Shunakar. Well read by Paul Lambert. Anticipating what was coming from the Newman-McCann combination. Vega's OK again. Chris Sutton on the header. And played off Larson by Newman. A wall of sound around Celtic Park. And George Alberts kicked the ground as he played that pass. And more problems for Rangers. Alberts immediately indicated to the technical area that he's in trouble. Struck the ground as he played the pass, as he'd been carrying an ankle injury. And Rangers may have to make another change in force this time. Yeah, it certainly looks like it to uh, George Albert's indicating right away. He just stubbed his toes, he went to play this ball, you can see it quite clearly there. Holds his knee, looks as though it's uh, some kind of a knee jolt injury that he's got. But uh, right away the hand went up indicating uh, to the bench that it was in serious trouble. Time will tell whether the change will have to be made, but uh, the advocate, I think, getting prepared for that change. George Albert's just off the uh, screen. Looks to be in serious trouble. I don't think... No, no chance, I don't think. ...can take uh, any further part in this game, so another huge blow for the advocate. Rangers just when it looked as though... Um, although George Albers is waving to the, to, to the side, we're seeing that he's coming off. Difficult to 
not really coming out too well in the translating. Translation, Rob. He's limping over to the side. We'll just have to wait and see if that's the last uh, kick of the ball that Albers will make. It looked as if the message might be, take your time with the substitution because I may be able to make this, and that seems to be what's happening. There is a hope that Albert can come back into the play, and that would be a big boost for Rangers. They need some good news. And Celtic will make a change. Johan Njal be off. And a rear sighting in the Celtic first team of the John Barnes signed Olivier Tebele. Yeah, it's quite a strange game, this one, isn't it? Just when you think Rangers uh, are going to be forced to make the substitute, they don't, and uh, Celtic make the change uh, to Billy coming on for Mialbe. I can only assume that uh, Mialbe had some kind of an injury problem, and uh, Matt O'Neill making the decision that he's not going to take the chance with him for the rest of the second half. And the word is from uh, the technical area that... Uh, it's a recurrence of Johan Mialbi's groin trouble, which has led to him being withdrawn from the action. There was some thought he might have done an operation earlier in the season to sort it. Rangers getting forward with Tugai and Ferguson. Back from Malcolm. Tugai holds off Larson as well to get the pass away to Ferguson. Newman. To Flo. And quickly in to block the attempted clearance from Didier Agat. There's the heavy strapping around the left ankle of George Alberts. He wants to soldier on. Still not moving too freely but Rangers with not too many options available to them on the bench. Agat trying to force his way forward. Celtic have a free kick. Given against Bert Konterman, and remember, he has a yellow card against his name. Lennon with the free kick, played into the feet of Sutton. Lambert there to get it back. Vega. Newman, Alberts, McCann, Alberts again. You wonder how long George Alberts will be able to go on because he's not moving freely and one wonders what sort of chances he's taking on long-term trouble if he plays with that injury. Yeah, I think it's a huge decision for him that looked initially um, when he made the, the, the pass, he de definitely stubbed his toe into the ground, looked as though perhaps he had twisted. His knee was, in fact, his ankle. And he really is hobbling about out there. You know, you, you just wonder how long he's going to manage to, to, to play in this game. And you're right, he has taken a huge chance with his career. But still this much delicately poised. 1-0 the scoreline. As long as it stays that way, Rangers have a chance of salvaging something from what has seemed at times like Mission Impossible. Long from Vega, covering in behind Contraman was Wilson. Here's Albert. A talismanic figure at times for Rangers, such has been his success in the big matches. Here he is again. Spreads the play with a pass to Newman. Now from McCann. In behind Tebele. Too strong with the cross. Flipped back by Flo. Ferguson. Torrey Andrew Flo again. One against two. Petter and Vega both there. And a handball decision goes against the former Chelsea striker. No, it's, it's been a real good uh, second half for Rangers. They've been forced into making the changes. They're down to ten men. They've went with the back four, changed that uh, from the three they had in the first half, and they've thrown 
natural man into the midfield area, an area where they were completely dominated in the first half, and now they're more than holding their own, I would suggest, that in the second half, in fact, that area has belonged to Rangers since two guys have stepped in there. There also looks to be a new spirit about Rangers, they look to have had a little bit of belief restored, and that looked to be draining away from them in the first half as Celtic dominated in the midfield area. Ferguson and Tugai have combined well. Rangers will now, though, hope to spark some threat further forward. A deafening noise at times inside Celtic Park. Tom Boyd's clearance. Alan Thompson's header. Almost an hour played of this old firm fixture. Bobby Petter against 20 year old Robert Malcolm. Chris Sutton works it back to Neil Lennon. Malcolm again under pressure. That's good play. That will do him a lot of good. Stood firm. Uh, no way passed for Petter. McCann. Well, that's well played by Agat. He's threatening going forward. But he does a pretty solid job when he backtracks as well. Arthur Newman couldn't keep that in. He'll be much happier, Dick Advocat, uh, watching his team performance in the second half, playing with an awful lot of spirit, much more confidence as well. They seem to be prepared to get the ball down and actually pass it uh, through that midfield area where they really have done uh, particularly well in the second half. Tom Boyd, there's talk of uh, another year's contract in the pipeline for him. Chested down by Larson for Lambert. Challenged by Wilson, but it breaks for a gap. In for Paul Lambert, here's a chance. And that's a good challenge. A crucial one as well on Lambert by Wilson. Just as Lambert was pulling the trigger. That was a well-weighted pass into the path of Lambert. Lambert making a break from the midfield area, but Wilson saw the danger got himself out there. Excellent reading uh, from the young centre-back, uh, taking the responsibility and putting in a great challenge. The longest-serving player at the Rangers in the Rangers' first-team squad, Scott Wilson. Thompson's corner kick. A header on target, but not a huge problem for Stefan Kloss. A good corner in and... Uh, you know, a, a decent header, but uh, not nearly enough power on it to cause, cause any sort of a heartache. Barry Ferguson's pass probing at the Celtic defence, finding flow, but he was outnumbered as much as anything. Neil McCann supplying some width to the attack, in behind Tebley. And a corner kick is forced. The encouraging spell for Rangers continues. It is very encouraging, Neil McCann, hugging that uh, touchline, that's uh, forcing Celtic to put one of their three central defenders out there. To Billy, it is, it's marking him. Alberts with the corner, Robert Douglas in trouble! Headed away by Agat, and cleared this time by Tebele. A dreadful error by Robert Douglas, and he could well have been punished here. It's now Celtic to uh, turn to be a little bit nervous at the heart of that defence. Robert Douglas, on this occasion, making a real hash of that cross. He was, was not under any sort of pressure at all. It was a chance for 
continent uh, to, to have, have the shot and uh, Celtic very fortunate to get away with that one. Douglas got a touch to the shot but it was all important to Gatt on the line who saved Rangers. That is the end now for George Alberts. He's battled through the pain barrier for the last five or ten minutes. But it's time for a change and it's Alan Johnston who comes on as the replacement. Malcolm's cross. Time for Didier Agat to get the ball under control and set off. He'll need the ball too. Thompson trying to squeeze that pass inside Malcolm for Peta. Again, the youngster did well. Johnston to McCann. Clever pass from McCann for Newman. An important header from Vega. Two guy. Didn't catch the volley. Ferguson spins round, finds some room. That's for Flo. He was on sides. But it was a difficult one to get under control. But again, good vision from the Rangers midfield. Now turning some ideas into action. Two guided well to keep possession of the ball there as he tangled with Larson. Flow beaten by Vega, but a free kick given against Vega. Yeah, just a little bit of use of the hand there from Vega, but uh, Celtic under pressure now, Rangers piling it on, some excellent work from them, particularly down the left-hand side. Ferguson's free kick. Two guy. And now it's Celtic's turn for some jittery defending. And Celtic Rangers, I should say, will be looking to make this pressure count. In from Neil McCann, and better handling this time from Robert Douglas. He flopped at the last cross ball, but altogether more confident there. Yeah, I think that will help his confidence, uh, to be fair. On Douglas, he hasn't had anything to do, basically, in this game. He's only been called into action a couple of times. I think taking that cross will help his confidence. Uh, but uh, Celtic looking a little bit nervy at the back. Uh, Rangers coming more and more into this game, even though they're a man down. It has been a remarkable transformation in the Rangers' performance in the second half. And at times, you have to count the players to make sure they are actually one down. Agat against Newman. Fired in for Lawson! And that was good defending from Scott Wilson. Just the sort of position from which Larson has scored so many times before, and I think Martin O'Neill really thought this was in. Yeah, it looked as well. Uh, it was just going to go in at uh, the near post. Great run into the near post from Larson. Times his run so well. I got doing magnificently well getting to the byline. Super cross in. Rangers breathe again. Thompson's corner kick. There's Chris Sutton. Vega went for it. And Tommy Andre Flo nodded the ball away and was then caught by the late challenge from Vega. I think it was a genuine attempt to get on the end of the ball. Yeah, I think it's recognised by the referee that it was a genuine... You can actually see Vega there having an attempt to uh, just check out of that, that challenge. Um, he's taken a nasty one on himself there. That looks a real nasty knock to the side of his face, and he has to get a little bit of treatment uh, at the touchline. That looks as if it'll need a couple of stitches later on in the day. Flows header, Johnston. McCann trying to hold the ball up. 
did well. Now looking for it back from Newman, but that's asking a lot. And the pass from Newman allowing Olivier Tebley to get across and cut out the immediate danger. Ramon Vegas had the running repairs carried out and he's back on the pitch. Tebley, Larson, instant control. Sutton loses out to Contraman, now Ferguson. The pass running away from Johnston. Still more than 20 minutes left. And Martin O'Neill will see what's happening in front of him as a real test of his team's character, having dominated the midfield area and run the show in the first half. Ten-man Rangers now putting up stiff resistance. McCann showed too much of that to Tebley. But he's had a good last 10, 15 minutes. Neil McCann for Rangers doing what he does best. And a threatening figure down the left-hand side. Yeah, I feel that's a very important area for Rangers, uh, Neil McCann, Arthur Newman, uh, supporting him down the left-hand side. That's where they've been productive. He's a threat with his pace. He can create the crosses uh, to put in for flow, and Rangers are looking for support from likes of Johnson getting forward from a midfield area. That is Johnston. Back from Malcolm. All the way across from Newman. The one-two with McCann. Good challenge. He really is an absolute steal at £50,000 from Hib Sagat. And he sets up Henrik Larsson. And now drops it. A chance to seal the points for Thompson. And he will hope that he doesn't regret this moment. That was a real opportunity, was it, Celtic? Uh, hitting on the break, a lovely pass in from Larson. You, you, you just feel that Thompson has got to hit the target there. He just got under it a little bit. It was a real opportunity. Look, perhaps it's there was a little deflection onto it there from Claus, but an opportunity wasted. Petters cross, Contraman's header flicked away by Ferguson. Onto it is a gat. Powerfully struck, blocked away by Claus. An angry exchange between Newman and Kloss following this stop from the goalkeeper. Arthur Newman was shaking his fist in the direction of Stefan Kloss after he knocked that ball out. Newman obviously feeling that in pumming the ball out the way, he was setting up a chance on the rebound for Celtic. Lambert's throw. Hooked away by Newman. Conditions around Selig Park getting distinctly stormy. And this delivery from Alan Thompson is likely to be swirling all over the place. In from Thompson, headed away by Malcolm, back in from Lambert, that's Flo, Lambert again, good pass, the Petta, shot blocked by Conterman, Flo to Tugai, a chase from McCann, but it's skidded off the turf, and into the arms of Robert Douglas. Larson gets turned. Fouled by Scott Wilson. He knew he was beaten. Yeah, he did, there's no doubt uh, there that that was a foul, but the conditions really are deteriorating badly. 
Petters cross. Newman thought he had it, but it drifted away from him. It really is wild out there. And the combination of Newman and Malcolm let that run. Didier Agat was in hot pursuit. It's been a good little spell for Celtic, though. Uh, Rangers have dominated most of the second half, particularly in that midfield area, but uh, going to the back four, I think, has helped him as well. The defenders seem much more comfortable in that formation. They're pushing it up nice and tight, and, and they're playing like a compact unit, but just in the last five minutes or so, Celtic found their feet, managed to get some passes strung together, even though the conditions are absolutely dreadful, and coming in more and more into the game. But Wilson did well to recover there, having been nutmegged by Larson. Yes, Robert Malcolm being tested again. Pretty steep learning curve for the 20 year old over the last four or five days with an old firm cup semi final, followed by this vital. League match between the deadly rivals. In from Thompson. Corner kick. <laughs> One nil Celtic. Into the last 15 minutes. New Dallas issuing a warning. A lot going on off the ball. Thompson's delivery. Aided by the strong winds and taken away from the penalty box. Free kick given against a guts challenge on McCart. Football to come from BBC Scotland and it's Celtic at East End Park on the Sunday the 4th of March. So join us for that one, but uh, don't go away because you get the feeling there's more drama to come here. Petter to Larson. Did well, Scott Wilson to squeeze that down the line. Neil Lennon. I think the players need an award for you know, playing any sort of football in these conditions. It really has deteriorated into an awful uh, rainstorm we've got just now, some hail coming down as well. So full mark to these players that are still managing to produce good football. And from Thompson. To Larson, Sutton's control let him down, Contraman cleared, Bobby Petta swerving inside, then outside. Back for Lennon. Petta grounded, so Lennon chases it himself. Still Neil Lennon. Gat almost in at the far post after that heroic run from Lennon. Rangers fighting to cling on to their title which at the moment looks as if it's slipping away. Newman's cross, that was Vega. 
Bobby Petter off and running. Lambert to Thompson. And now Petter again. Celtic keeping the ball. Good challenge by Wilson. Today's attendance here at Celtic Park, 59,486. The official crowd not far short of 60,000. And as usual, ill for much unmissable viewing. Only one goal so far, but it could be a hugely significant goal for Celtic. If the scoreline stays this way, there will be 12 points between Celtic and Rangers in the title race. Newman to McCann. Two guy, Flo, and Flo was held back inside the penalty box. It seemed the ball may well have been running away from him there, but there looked to be some grappling going on in the penalty box. It'd be interesting to have another look at that. Yeah, there certainly seemed to be some kind of a contact. Sutton on Flo, Flo looked as though the ball had broken for him kindly in front of him in the box. It looked as though. Sutton had perhaps had his arms round about him. Reverie Dallas was, wasn't too far away and decided not to give anything, but uh, I'm with you, Rob. I'd like to see that again. We'll see that in a few seconds. The play rages on with Thompson. Let's have a look at that again. This was the moment that Tori Andre Flo was held back in the penalty box by Sutton. I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. It was a kind break of the ball for Flo. It, it, it turns, it falls in front of him. You can see quite clearly that Sutton had his arms round Flo, and Rangers really did have a genuine claim for a penalty on that occasion. Neil McCann for Rangers. And I think Rangers' feeling of injustice, which wasn't really too evident at the time, there weren't huge protests about it, but I think that feeling of injustice will grow after the match when they see the pictures of a blatant tug from Sutton on Flo, the two former Chelsea strikers, and a penalty kick might well have been given, although in these sort of instances, Hugh Dallas is obviously looking for support from his assistants as well. I don't think uh, Dallas had, had a particularly good view of it. Uh, obviously, Sutton is between himself and the ball, and uh, really the, the challenge is coming on his blind spot. But I've no doubt that the stand-side linesman had a perfect view of that one, and that is where he should be coming into the game and uh, aiding his referee. So it might have been 1-1, but might have been... have never won anything in football, and it remains 1-0 Celtic. And it seems a long time ago that Alan Thompson blasted the ball past Stefan Kloss. Larson beaten by the combination of two guy and Wilson. Seven and a half minutes of the regulation 90 remaining. Engrossing it's been as ever. And two guy has been a strong contributor for Rangers in the second half. He's made a real difference, and you wonder how the, what the outcome might have been had he started the match. Yeah, you're quite right, uh, Rob. I think uh, that is a key area in, in any game, and, and certainly the Rangers were not at the races in the first half. Uh, I can't bring on two guy in the second half and all of a sudden they start dominating Didier Agat setting off for the byline and Arthur Newman all the way with him 
That's good defending. Because when it comes to sheer pace, not much doubt that DDA Agat's got it. It is, yeah. I mean, really, you've got to use your experience. Uh, Arthur Newman is an experienced player. Uh, Agat is, is electric. He likes to go to the byline, uh, you know, 90% of the time. That's where he wants to hit. I think Newman just used his experience there, allowed the player to make the first move and anticipated it well and got there first. Thompson's corner kick. Flo's header. Sutton underneath it. Neil McCannon losing the ball in a dangerous area and then as he tried to atone for his error, fouled Bobby Petter. Yeah, McCann's just got to check himself there. That, that, that is a very dangerous challenge. Fortunately, he made no contact with Petter. Referee absolutely correct to have a word in his ear and uh, that word would be to Neil McCann just to calm things down. Thompson's free kick. Failed to get beyond... Barry Ferguson, second chance for Alan Thompson, this time into the feet of Larson, trying to spin away from Wilson, now Petter, out comes Claus, looked as if he could have caught that, elected to punch, as the hail and the sleet and the snow, whatever it is, looks like a mixture of all three, pours down again. Conterman's boot up, advantage being played. Larson to Sutton, and that's another foul by Conterman. And he must be sailing dangerously close. <laughs> I don't think he can uh, afford too many more challenges like this. Uh, rather rash one again, particularly in these conditions. Um, very difficult to keep your feet, but uh, Sutton just getting a little touch. Pass them to the right-hand side, Conterman getting in very hard. Um, as I said, I don't think he could afford to have too many more like that if he wants to stay in the pitch. I don't know if you call that sensible refereeing or not, but uh, you get the feeling Bert Conterman got the benefit of the doubt there. But Celtic have a free kick. And Alan Thompson stands over it. Henrik Larsson instead, and not too far away from the target. I think it was too far, it was a curling effort. Um, far enough, though, uh, Klaus, really, looking at that one with ease, never really causing him too much concern. Four minutes and counting. Martin O'Neill will be having one or two nervous glances at his watch, no doubt, because 1-0, still the slender advantage for Celtic. And there is still time. The Rangers will get some rewards for their second-half performance. Newman to Flo. Ferguson to Tukai. Malcolm's pass is a good one for Johnston. Opportunity for Rangers here. Out comes Douglas. Spilled the ball, but no one there for Rangers. It was Neil McCann's challenge on the goalkeeper. He was well entitled to go for it. Neil McCann was pretty brave in, in going for that one. Uh, Douglas always looked favourite to get it, to, but Neil McCann showing how much this game means to him going into to that rough challenge. Lovely cross in from Johnson. Nice, nicely worked move from Rangers, but uh, McCann there going in against a huge frame of Douglas and coming off the worst. Only two and a half minutes of regulation time remaining, but there will surely be a few minutes of stoppage time to be added. So there is still time for this match to take. Another twist. Tempoli's clearance. Off the chest of Wilson. And Willie, the man of the match. Yeah, there's quite a few candidates out there uh, in the first half, mostly Celtic players in the second, Rangers players, but uh, for me, 
man the match is uh, Bobby Petter. I think his uh, control has been exceptional. Showed some nice, lovely little flicks and touches. Put in some very decent crosses and well. And I think just constantly he's been a threat. Lennon to Sutton. Rangers badly want possession back, and they have it with Johnston and now McCann. Up ahead of him only floor. Rangers need more players forward. Arthur Newman now on the overlap. There's an angry exchange off the ball between Tebbley and Flo, but Lennon has it back. A gap to Larson. Alan Thompson, off in pursuit, and tracked all the way by two guy. There'll be some exhausted Rangers players in particular after this. One man down for the entire second half. And a foul coming against Flo. Two minutes stoppage time to be added on top of the 30 seconds left. So two and a half minutes. For Rangers to try to rescue something out of this, otherwise Celtic will move 12 points clear. Lambert against Ferguson, Scotland teammates. Newman back to Kloss. Celtic supporters looking for the final whistle already, but they'll need to wait a couple of minutes. Robert Malcolm stumbling under the challenge of Petta. Wilson to Contamon. The long ball for Flo. Tebbley got there before McCann. The only goal scorer so far, Alan Thompson, and sends out a clear message there as he thumps the ball away. Not bother where it goes, as long as it goes. Yeah, the Celtic just really want to, to, to waste some time. Uh, they've got the lead, they're not really interested in scoring another goal, they just want to take the full three points, even though it is a slender lead with the uh, Rangers still coming forward and still with the opportunity of levelling it. Inside the last minute of the match, the second minute of stoppage time. Arthur Newman. An awkward shot, because it skidded off the turf, but it was straight at Robert Douglas. And there won't be too many more opportunities to score in this match. Ferguson's sliding challenge knocks the ball out of play and Celtic naturally enough in no great hurry to take this throw the celebrations are starting already we've now played two minutes of added time we're surely seconds away from the final whistle. And there it is. Martin O'Neill celebrates the polite handshake with Dick Advocat. And surely Celtic have taken a giant stride, a decisive stride towards the league championship. Alan Thompson with the only goal of the game after 16 minutes. Maybe a touch of good fortune about it in the way it came around. Unsure defending from Rangers, punished by Thompson. And when Fernando Rickson of Rangers was sent off before half-time, you felt that was that. Rangers reorganised and fought back in the second half and produced a performance which was in short contrast to the way they played in the first half. But what they lacked was the cutting edge, and it's... Martin O'Neill's team, which comes out on top, a handshake for the match officials. But the one nagging doubt that you have in your mind, Willie, is that Rangers 
might well and should well have had a penalty kick. Yeah, you, you really can't uh, write the script for these games, can you? Because Rangers absolutely not in this game in the first half. Celtic totally dominated. If Celtic get the lead, Rangers have a man sent off just before half time. Rejig things, go to a back four and put three into midfield with two guys coming on and then start to dominate the game. Play extremely well with ten men. Put an awful lot into it perhaps because has brought them together uh, to produce that performance in the second half. But it was a super performance by Rangers in the second half. And with that penalty, there will be the lingering doubt that uh, perhaps the stand side linesman should have helped his referee a little bit more and perhaps given that spot kick. I'm sure Dick Advocate will be looking at that after the game. He had a wry smile on his face at full time and he'll be thinking that perhaps they were hard done by not to get that spot kick. I think over the piece, Celtic definitely dominated in the first half. Streets ahead of Rangers, but the second half to Rangers credit, they came back. It was a far closer game with a lot of good performances on both sides. And again, played in a reasonably good spirit as well. I think most of the fans here this afternoon enjoyed it. I certainly did. So Celtic stretch their long unbeaten home record, their long winning record at home in domestic football. You have to go back 11 months to find the last time they lost in domestic action. And they move 12 points ahead of Rangers in the title race. And it's now difficult, almost impossible to contemplate that Celtic can be stopped in their relentless charge towards the title. A total transformation in the way Celtic perform these days under the management of Martin O'Neill. And it seems that Rangers and any thoughts that they had of stopping Celtic have vanished on this dramatic Sunday afternoon at Celtic Park. Alan Thompson with the only goal of the game and Rangers having Fernando Rickson sent off. Never a particularly dirty match, but uh, Rickson was certainly guilty of far too many crazy challenges. And certainly once he'd been yellow carded, he was always treading that disciplinary tightrope. And he was eventually sent from the field. And you wonder if Rangers has had 11 on the pitch in the second half and had reorganized in the way they did bringing two guy into the play whether or not they might just have clawed something out of the game but that's all in the land of ifs and buts and maybes the facts tell you that Celtic have got a priceless three points out of the third and final SPL game before the league becomes a table of two halves in early April and a huge psychological victory for Celtic this afternoon as well over their deadly rivals let's hear from the man of the match Bobby Petta he's talking to Chick Bobby you sure do like playing against Rangers don't you well it's, you know haven't lost uh, well, the other one 5-1 but uh, I think that I'm glad with the performance from everybody and uh, you know it's a good result today what is the secret of your success this season? How have things turned around so well, both for you and the club? Well, in hard work yourself, and, and you know, I mean, just uh, I get a chance to play, and everybody's confident, you know, and everybody uh, works the bollocks off. Let me, let me be the first. <laughs> I thought you could say that. Well, <laughs> let, let me be the first to say to you, or the first one to ask you this question: Do you think the championship is now won? Well, you know, you still got uh, you know a lot of games uh, to play. But uh, you know, Rangers are the main, the main contenders, you know, for the, for the title. And now we've got a gap of 12 points, so it will be difficult for them to, to get us. I'm sure in the background you can hear the, the Celtic fans singing. I'm sure there will be a few celebrations in your dressing room tonight. I think so. Yeah. But what, what about the, the rest of the games? It's now about not getting complacent and just getting. You still have games to be won, obviously. Yeah, we just have to be focused, you know, and play and uh, play every game 100% and, uh, and go in there with uh, and with 100% uh, work rate. Well, great performance today, Bobby. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, Scotland. Mind the match. Okay. Sure, that champagne will be open tonight. Aye. Thank you very much. Cheers. Aye. Bobby Petter, the man of the match. Alan Thompson was who got the goal and sparked the celebrations. They sounded like uh, championship celebrations to me, Graham. Did it sound that way for you? <laughs> yeah, we said before the game, Rangers had to win here today. They've not done that. Celtic, um, unless they have a total collapse, will win the championship now. 
it may not have been the prettiest of goals that Alan Thompson has ever scored, Mick, but uh, it'll be up there in terms of the most important, Still I would think. Time. Yeah, one of, I'm sure he'll enjoy it more than any other. He had a great chance in the second half, which he missed. But I mean, it was it was laid on a plate from here by Henrik Larsson. I think you know, both Graham and I thought he tied a shoe here. Tried to open himself up and shoe and it rolled in his path. Simple tapping for him, very important goal. You spoke about the, the psychological aspect beforehand. This is just such a huge lift for everyone around Celtic Park, isn't it? It's the uh, championship winning game. <laughs> well, I'll say yeah, it. I'm right, not sure. Yeah. I think everybody else is saying it. I know Dick Advocate I might not. Martin O'Neill might, you know, tell the party line and say that, you know, we've got to keep winning games. That's won the championship for me. Right, let's hear if Chris Sutton is going to see it. He's down there with Chick Young. Chris, that wasn't a classic match, but uh, that wouldn't matter to you guys. No, the main thing was uh, the result. It was a hard fought. I thought Rangers did ever so well second half. Uh, with 10 men, but uh, the main thing was the result, and we held on well. Did you enjoy that much? Well, I enjoyed the result. Uh, I think me and Henrik, you know, uh, had to do a lot of running as on Wednesday night, and I think we felt very tired at the end. But uh, as I say, the main thing was the result, and uh, you know, it puts us in, in a good position. It's, it's better than a good position, it's a wonderful position for you. Do you, do you feel now the championship has been won? No, not by any means. I mean, uh, when I was at Blackburn, we were well ahead. Um, with five or six games to go and we blew up and only won it because of a result on the last day so uh, we've uh, we've done well to put ourselves in this position but we're 12 games to go um, we've still got some tough games ahead and uh, I don't think anybody's complacent but we know what an important game it was today to be fair Celtic do not look like a nervous side no, I don't think we're nervous we're confident um, it wasn't a classic game today. Uh, you know, I think all the other games have been, there have been lots of goals. Um, but I mean, we would have taken that before the game. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's the answer. He wouldn't see it. And um, no surprise, Graham, I suppose. Players and managers simply don't want to say that sort of thing in case it all blows up in their no, face. They, they can, but um, we can. I think yeah. Celtic have won the championship today. Um, he makes the point that when he was at Blackburn, they were ahead. So far ahead after five games, five games to go, and they blew up. But you know the Scottish, the Scottish Premier and English Premier are different, two different ball games. And Celtic, um, with everything I've gone for them, if they were to blow it now, that would go down in history as the biggest ever blow. I think. Hmm. Martin O'Neill, the, the job he's done here this season, Mick. Um, how would you rate that? Well, twenty. What was the difference? Twenty-one. Twenty-one point? points last season. Twenty-one points. So there's a. Well, a 33-point difference coming back. I mean, well, you know, I know it's, it's a huge turnaround, and, and Martin has done very well. I think what he has done, he's got some of the players who were here last year playing very well, and the buys that he made have done well for him in, in this league. Alan, Tam Alan Thompson's coming and done well, Neil Lennon's done well. Didier Agat, who I thought was the man of the match, to be quite honest, I thought he was outstanding defensively and going forward. And in Ramon Vega had a bad time at Tottenham. He's coming and done well. They're all playing well, but they've come into a team Latterly, the later stages that are playing well, and it's easier. But early on, you know, for Chris Sutton to come in for such a big money buy, they've all done well for him, and he's, he's got them playing. He's got confidence in the place, and they're flying at the minute. They're absolutely flying. Yeah. Uh, when they are feeling like that, um, you just yeah. feel that it's never going to slip away. I, I'm going to offer a different argument. I think Rangers have had the eye taken off the ball because of the Champions League. I think um, they've had the resources stretched. Take nothing away from Celtic, you know, fantastic, you Celtic fantastic, <laughs> fantastic home record. They've deserved to win the game today, as well as the Rangers did in the second half. But Rangers have had their eye taken off the ball by the Champions League, and that does happen to you. Right, we'll talk about Rangers in a moment. Let's hear from Martin O'Neill. He's now joined Chick Young. Martin, let me be the first to ask you. I'm sure you'll be asked about 10,000 times in the next week. Is, has that championship been won now? And well, you know my answer anyway, Chick. But what, what it does do, it uh, gives us great confidence. It's been a fantastic week for us. Gives a great boost, and I mean, it also gives us a bit of a cushion as well, too, you know. But by my reckoning, still, I still know that we can we can win another eight games and still not be assured of winning the championship. So it's far from over. It's been terrific today, and delighted to have won the game. And uh, all credit to the players, deserve everything they've got. The last two league games were, we saw goals deluge, but today one goal. Do you always feel one goal would do it? No, I, no, I, I didn't. I didn't. I was delighted that we we got the first goal, which gives us gives us just let's settle down a bit. I thought we played terrifically first half. Second half, Rangers come into the game, uh, ten uh, down to ten players. Everything, to, you know, they had to go for everything. We had a chance or two to wrap it up. We could never get that second goal, and Rangers we had one kicked off or cleared off the line. Didi cleared it off the line, but I I just felt we were very strong today. I guess that's always a danger, no matter how much possession you have in the first half, and you played so well, as you said, but you, know, you need two goals. We couldn't we couldn't kill the game off. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was delighted with the 1-0 at half-time, but we just couldn't kill the game. 
and and the longer the game went on, you know, you knew that just Rangers were going to pour forward in numbers, and there's anything can happen. At the second goal, we had a fantastic move once where Hendricks played through and Thompson's almost come in to finish it. That would have been a fantastic goal. Didn't happen. Wasn't so good for the nerves either. <laughs> but um, obviously delighted to have won. Have you managed to turn this club around so quickly, Matt? No, it's the, the, the players' attitude has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I know I've said this to you ad nauseum now. Not only am I delighted with the attitude of the players that have come in, but I'm absolutely delighted with the attitude of the players that have been here. Well done. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Martin O'Neill, a very happy man, and that's why the gap now, well, it's 12 points over Rangers. No one should forget, of course, that Hibernian still in second place. They may have played one game more, but they're in second place, and as things stand, they are in the uh, front running for the second, or potentially, the second Champions League place. But Celtic have the advantage at the top of the table. It was narrow, Graham, and there was an incident late on where Rangers should have had a penalty. I don't think anyone yeah, will have I, any doubt about that. It's the classic. It's when things are not going for you, they're not going for you. You know, Rangers get a player sent off. A penalty a, was a penalty, I think, in everyone's eyes. And um, it's not given. And when things are not happening for you, you get the brick of the ball there. And it's <laughs> well, if that's not a penalty, then you've never seen one. But I mean, yeah, that, he only that happens one in arm, football. Didn't he? To be fair, yeah, just the one, one arm. arm yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, but to be, on the other side of the coin, you know, Celtic have had a couple of chances second half, as well as Rangers did. They had a lot more, a lot more of the ball second half. Rangers, Celtic did have a couple of real, real chances to to wrap it up. Um, but as long as it was 1-0, Rangers kept going. They always had a chance to get themselves back into the game. And there was one other incident. It was Robert Douglas who was caught out. And um, again, Celtic uh, perhaps lucky to escape this one. I say lucky, perhaps not. Maybe it's the case they were defending well uh, in terms of managing to get the ball off the line. Yeah, goalkeeper comes makes a hash of it. Got a hand to it there. Yeah, the yeah just as well. I don't think it was a great connection on, so, the, yeah. on the volley, but... Um, the, the benefit of having won't. somebody on the post and sure. some, yeah, the, some put them on, some don't. It's the benefit of having one there. But it's an indication, perhaps, of, of just how the season's going and how this game went. That we're looking for Rangers' chances in an old firm game, and we're talking about one penalty and, and one clearance off the line. I didn't have many did this. Although second half, you have to say that they that they took the, the they took the plaudits, and I wonder why two guy didn't didn't start the game when you look at him. Graham, yeah. I know, likes him a great deal. I think he's a good player. I've worked he was on three years, a top well, player. He, he was outstanding there, second half. And what they did, they maintained possession and they, they put Celtic on the back foot. Well, they didn't have loads of chances, but you wonder had they started with that formation, two guy playing, what might have happened? You know, Celtic never stood, never stepped out in the, the second half, never tried to, to get a second goal, really. Um, they realised that they were they weren't having as much of the ball as they did in the first half and really, you know, the midfield didn't try and change it. Lennon well, never came came out of the back. Didn't look like the player he was first half, but Rangers had players running off the ball in the second half, which just never did. They weren't making angles, there were people running everywhere. I mean, they, right, they got nothing to lose at that ball. stage. You've got to have the ball for people well. to make angles and they didn't have it in the first half. Yeah. The ball was just coming, it was ping pong from, nothing was sticking up front. Midfield players were looking to get off their front men in the first half and there was, they weren't getting hold of it. I suppose what we're seeing from Celtic now is what we saw from Rangers so often. They have the confidence and they have the self-belief, I suppose, to go into a game like this and, and simply stroll through it. Yeah, the, um, I can't say, they can't say they stroll yeah. through it because there was always a chance the Rangers getting one back in the second half because they had so much of the ball. Now, whether it was a tactical thing or whether the players themselves realised that they didn't have to step out and go for a second goal, but certainly the second half, Rangers bossed the game. But Celtic had the better chances in the second half. You know, they had a couple of yeah. near post header was a great chance. The, the breakaway was a great chance. Rangers got, they took some, they must take some credit for the way they came out and played in the second half, but over 90 minutes, you but can we, see Celtic. We, we, we talked about when things are going for you, and 12 months ago, we sat and watched the game from the studio. Mm -hmm. and. Uh,